All right, good morning, good afternoon, and evening wherever you are in the world. My name is John Witt, and this is a handstand prep class. So if you've never taken a handstand class before, welcome. Um, I really truly believe it's a basic position. It does take skill and strength and lots of different factors come into play in terms of um, eventually learning a handstand. And the goal for me is to get someone up into a 10 second hold in a handstand. So I'm building the foundation. Uh, you don't have to have a TheraBand, but I'm going to be using a TheraBand. It's something that if you're interested in really developing a, a good handstand, it's a very good warm up tool and it helps build strength in the shoulders for stability. And it's something that um, I always have a band with me um, in terms of when I'm doing my my handstands in terms of prep and and just restoration as well. So and you could use any kind of band; it doesn't have to be this particular band. Um, you, you just want it long enough that you can stretch out your shoulders. So I hope these classes have been helping you. Um, you can always leave me a message. You can always send me a video, and then I could give you uh, some specific tips in terms of why it is that you can't do a handstand. You most likely need the help of another person. I mean, there are people, um, exception. I mean, I, I learned a handstand on my own pretty much, but um, I, to really get better at it, you really need another set of eyes. And if you don't have uh, the means for proper coaching or teaching, what you can do is you can videotape yourself and you can really teach yourself. Um, I didn't do it that way, but if I were learning the handstand for the first time, that's something that I would use. So the, the band is, is it's, you know, it's long enough that you can stretch it out. A yoga strap is good, but um, to create fuller ranges of motion, that's why the band is better. But let's say you just have a, a yoga strap. This is what I'm gonna do. Is I'm just gonna have my hands underneath the band and I'm just pulling it apart. This will strengthen the rotators of the shoulders. It's not the most exciting way of doing it, but it's, it's, it's good enough. So if, even if you didn't have a yoga strap, you could use a towel um, or like a kind of a thicker t-shirt, something that's a bit stronger. But with the TheraBand, it's, it's going to pull apart. And that, again, like I said, it's going to increase the range of motion. So for those of you that have just this, what I would do is I'd pull for about three to five seconds and then I'd let it relax and I'd pull. You could also change the angles and that's really good. But let's say you do have a, a TheraBand. It's, I'm going to stretch it out in front of me and I'm going to pull it apart, right? And as I'm pulling it apart, I can hold a static position. The reason I'm bringing it in and out is each time that I, I bring it in, I relax. I have to um, build up an integration or a strength to, to pull it out again. So I'm just going to do five of these, but when I do them, I'll do 10. That's just my routine. I'll do 10 of these. Um, I'll show you the, the next positions that I'll use. And then as you pull it out, right? And you could use the yoga strap for this as well. It's just, you'd want it wide enough that you get more of a stretch through the shoulders. And then I'm gonna bring it in and I'm just gonna relax it down. I'm gonna take the arms up into an overhead position. So now if I do have the yoga strap, I'm just in a wide position. But if I have a TheraBand, I'm bringing it out to the sides and down and then back up overhead. So you, you're first in the wide position and then out into a T position. So um, it's kind of straight down. Uh, I'll show you a different variation, which is more based in developing more range in the shoulder. So I'm bringing it up and then I'm pulling it apart um, and then back up. Now, if you have a band like mine, you don't have a lot of strength. You, you could just include just one band. If you have more strength than that, then you're using both of the bands. But the last thing that I do for my shoulders is I'm, I'm gonna take the band up, I'm just gonna give you a side profile, is I'm taking the band up and then I'm pulling out like the Y position, but then I'm taking it back. So if you're new to something like this, I think the best thing to do is just to hold a static hold in a range of motion that's stimulating, nothing too stressful, and then you can take it up. And that could be your routine, you know, five seconds back, up, back. But as, as you get inc increased range of motion in the shoulders, I'm going to take it out wide, but then I'm going to bring it back behind me and down. So up and then back. You could do this with a yoga strap. It's just, 
it's a lot more progressive with the yoga strap. That's why I like a TheraBand better for this for a beginner. And, um, you know, there's other progressive ways that you could do this with a stick. And, and eventually you could do it with some weight, right? So I'm taking it back and then I'm bringing it up and I'm bringing it down. But that'll really help make the shoulder more pliable and stable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up against the wall with my back and then my feet are forward and then I'm lifting the heel. So really a basic thing to do is a wall sit. And as I've mentioned in previous classes, uh, the stronger your legs are, the better your practice will be, but the better your handstand will be. So if you're struggling with kicking up, uh, just getting your legs to be strong enough to do the action. And another part is really just getting the weight forward enough in the hands, which is complicated for people. So I, I wasn't going to time it, but I didn't, you know, I think a, a 30 second hold is good for a beginner. If you can hold it for 60 seconds and I'm not doing it as I would like a training plan, but if you really want to get more detailed and practice, laying stuff out and really writing it out and following it is the is the best way to a, attain whatever skill it is that you're trying to get because you know if you if you're doing it some days one way and you're not really applying yourself enough um you, you really have to stick to it and and, and that could be like two three times a, a week that you're doing your handstand practice and then eventually it could be you're doing it twice a day you know, that's as it's getting warmer here where I live. Um, it's, it's just kind of nice to do outside. I'll, I'll speak more about that. Like I love doing it on like a tennis court or basketball court. That's my favorite surface of handstanding. So I'm going to lower my heels and then bringing myself up. And then I'm just going to step back and I'm just going to be at the wall. And then with my back up against the wall, I'm just here and I'm, I'm lining myself up really basic but this is the line that you have to keep. So if I'm, the more out of alignment I am in a handstand, the more if inefficient it is. So the, the better the line, the easier it gets. And that's why people can hold it for a minute or longer, right? It's because they, they really have a, a great sense of alignment. And obviously there's other factors that, you know, factor into that. But I'm gonna take the arms into a cactus position and I'm gonna slide the arms up I want to keep my ribs in. So for me, this is still a pretty difficult thing to practice. So I'm here where I'm, I'm elevating the arm, but keeping the ribs in as, as best that I can. You know, for me to take my arms up more, I really have to, um, takes a lot of effort. So my elbows are slightly away from the wall. As you get more um, flexible in the shoulder, stronger in the shoulder, You'll be taking the arms all the way up overhead, but trying to keep the ribs in. So take the arms back to a cactus position. If you're really cramping up, you just bring the arms down. And the more difficult the exercise is, you won't need as many repetitions because it's so stimulating. So say this was really difficult for you, you know, maybe two to five is all that you're doing. So I'm stretching the arms up along the wall, but I'm keeping the ribs in really working hard and keeping my lower back from swaying because that's really what happens in a, in a handstand um, for most male practitioners. So you can take the arms up, really reaching up out of the arm, push down through the feet, and then take the arms back to cactus and bring the arms down. So I'm just gonna shake up the arms a little bit. Now you could, you could bend in the knees. But also what I like is swinging the arms. So if you couldn't swing the arms, that's why I'm saying you could just shake it out, right? But I'm just gonna be moving my pelvis and letting my arms fall into my body, right? Just because that arm position, uh, you know, it can, it can make the, the arms a little bit stiff and you should, you know, arms should move freely in space. So as I'm moving my pelvis, it's moving my arms and this is, you know, doesn't take a lot of effort, but if you're very active, whether it be handstanding or weight training, um, you're a really active person physically, these are so good, you know. Um, if you had to tear on your shoulder, 
maybe not the best thing to start with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come back into the middle and I'm gonna come down on the hands. I'm gonna work um, more building up the strength in the hands. And today we're gonna be working a little bit more on single arm strength, bent arm strength, which isn't really, some people would say it's not really transferable to a handstand. But in my opinion, the weaker you are, um, the more strength you build, the easier it will be to get the arms straight. So I'm a big proponent of bent arm strength, building for straight arm strength. Because you have to, when you come up to any push-up variation, your arms are straight. So you're getting more time in those positions. So I'm going to come down on the hands and knees. And I'm just going to have my hands, you know, slightly turned out. And I'm moving the weight around just to adjust my hands, my wrist. And as I'm here, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty stable in the scapula, just as, as, you, as you would be in a handstand. So come back into the middle, and what you're going to do is lift the heels of your hands off the floor. So notice when I do this, my shoulders are over my hands, my wrist. If, if I'm back here, it's, it's okay, right? That's, you might not have the strength to do it where your shoulders are over your hands, but if you can get the weight forward, it's going to be hard, very difficult to do. But that's essentially what's happening is you have to really use a lot of hand strength and forearm strength initially in learning the handstand. And then it'll just help build up more resilience in the wrist, right? So, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have the backs of my hands on the floor and I'm just moving the weight back a little bit. But I'm exploring which wrist or which arm actually needs more uh, stretching here. So if it's like, you know, I feel... I, uh, I feel more tension in my left side. I may actually bring more weight there, um, but I could pulse. Like I'm leaning to my left, going to my right, and leaning to my left. And the further back I am in this makes it more progressive. Remember when I said with the, the finger push-ups, the heel raises, uh, that's easier. That's more progressive when you're forward. So it really depends on the position where your shoulders are, right? So I'm going to turn the hands forward, and then I'm going to turn the hands in. So I'm moving the weight forward and back, stretch out the forearms. Um, I, I, I pull quite a bit in my weekly practice. So I'm pulling in various ways. I'm climbing in various ways. So um, these are very good for those exercises as well. So I'm going to come back where I'm turning my hands back toward my knees. And then as I'm back here, I'm going to sit back. And you don't have to sit back as far as I am, but the further back you go, then the more stretch you get in the hands, right? So I'm going to come back and where I'm back here, I'm going to push through the hands and I'm going to lift up into plank just for a few breaths. So I'm, going to, I'm just like five breaths, I'm, but I'm trying to make the front of my body more hollow. And that's, you know, when people look at my plank, they might be like, oh, he's so rounded. But that's also what you're trying to do in a handstand. So my plank is more specific for my handstand practice. So it makes it more effortful. Like I'm using more effort, but that's to help in building up a better base and having a stronger handstand is, is what I'm working towards. I'm going to be on the tops of my feet. Not that you have to do this, but a very good stretch in the tops of the feet but really requires more strength in the hands, the arms, not a lot, but um, when I get into the bent arm positions of this session today, uh, maybe it's better off that you just do straight arms, like side plank, plank, these are all really good things to do. And as you get more consistent, then you get, in, get into the more bent arm practices of pushing, which will help. So I'm gonna take it up into a down dog, and in down dog, I'm pulling back to the hips. I'm, I'm moving my feet if I need to move, right? And I'm gonna, sw I'm gonna come forward and through into an up dog. So I'm coming forward, I'm using my hands. I'm resisting the floor. So you wanna get more, you know, connected. Understanding how much pressure to use in your hands makes a, 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 a world of difference in terms of balancing on your hands. Then come back into a down dog. So come back into plank, back into down dog. 
I'm going to come forward and through. Once again, I'm going to come forward. I'm moving through my arms. I'm elevating my upper body. My knees are down. That might be better for you. You know, Cobra and Up Dog are very similar. Um, my preference, and it doesn't have to be your preference, is I prefer Cobra more in terms of back extension. Like I love, I love the freedom of Up Dog because it's, you know, but in terms of leverage, I like having my hips down, more leverage in the spine. So bring your knees down, bring your upper body forward and down, come all the way down. And then when you come down, just come up onto your elbows and you're just in a sphinx position. So in sphinx, I'm just, you know, trying to pull myself forward. You know, just a basic warm up is, is what I'm using, but it could, it could be, you know, a, a completely different routine. But um, the best thing about my practice or that I love about my practice is that I, I feel incredibly healthy and well um, on top of being able to do dynamic things. So I wanna keep that. So I'm gonna look over my right shoulder. I'm gonna look over my left. And then I'm just gonna come down where I'm bringing my arms uh, beside me. I'm gonna lift up into a, a bit of a back bend here. Just lifting up just for a few breaths. So this is shoulder retraction and it's used um, obviously in all back bends, but it's something that you may be doing in your handstands and that's partially why you, so you want, uh, doing it one to warm you up, but I'm also doing it so that you can see the difference because if you're not protracting the shoulders, it's very, uh, very difficult to balance in handstand. So bring yourself down, and then when you come down, what we're gonna do is use your yoga strap or a band, and we're gonna practice a handstand line, just because we're here, and this is, you know, uh, like I said about programming, but you could do this, like collectively throughout the day, and you could do it for, say, two to five minutes. So just, you know, set a timer and do it, right? But I'm not gonna do it that long, I'm gonna do about 30 seconds. So my, if I couldn't take my arms up off the floor, I'm just trying to realign my pelvis. So just for a few seconds, have your head down and just pull your belly in, pull your ribs in, and then this is what you wanna keep when you're doing freehand handstands. This is what you wanna keep when you're doing chest to wall, or even back to wall, right? You wanna keep the line of the lower body nice and tight, and that's what's gonna support your lower back and support a better line. Now, if this is easy, you if you know this, the band makes it more difficult. So if you can't use the band right, don't use it, but I'm gonna pull it apart where it's about the width of my shoulders and try to see that I'm, I'm lifting my lower I'm lifting my abdomen away from the floor. I'm trying to bring my ribs in so that I'm not swayed, right? But I'm going to have my head down. I'm going to lift the arms up, and I'm going to hold it for about 30 seconds. So I'm not going to talk. I'm just going to do the exercise. But if you're pulling on the band, you're just pulling a little bit apart, and that will help externally rotate the shoulders. So have the head down. Lift the arms up. Pull the band apart. And then you can bring the band down. I'm gonna come up onto my hands. I'm gonna do a cobra. So I'm coming up into a low cobra, possibly up into something higher. If I keep my hips down, it's more thoracic extension, which I, is typically more difficult for people. But, um, you know, hands could be way more forward, they could be wider. I'm gonna, I could stay up, you could stay up, right? But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna do another rep where I'm coming up. When I come up, I, I really wanna be extending through my mid to my upper back. If your hips are off the floor, it's okay. It's just a matter of like finding the right kind of leverage. <clears throat> so take three deep breaths here. Use your fingertips. 
use your imagination in terms of expanding in multiple directions as opposed to just forward, up, or back, right? So bringing yourself forward and down, and then as you come down, have the hands just underneath the shoulders, tuck through the toes, and press straight up into plank, and then into a down dog. And then a down dog, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk my hands back towards my feet. So I'm just walking back, and then I'm walking forward back into plank. And this is something, you know, really basic, but it could be something that you do, you know, as a routine. So I'm walking back, nice and slow, right? I could have my knees bent, I could have my legs straight, I could stay in a forward bend, right? So I'm forward one more time, pushing through the hands, and then I'm, I'm down with the knees. I'm gonna have the toes tucked and sit back towards the feet. So as I sit back, you know, I'm just in an upright position if I can. Right. I'm going to come forward where my feet are untucked. I'm going to sit back on my feet. You know, same thing. If I want more leverage in the front of my body, I'm going to lean back a little bit. Um, you could be certainly upright. You could be on a block. But the more manipulation you get into the lower body, you're going to move much better. Uh, and I'm going to do some active... Uh, squatting. So when I, I'm going to come up onto my hands and I'm going to push to the feet and when I'm here I'm just holding this low position but my hips are high, right? Pushing through the hands, pushing through the fingers and this is a lot like a handstand. So we're going to hold this five more breaths if we can. If you can, bring the weight forward and this is again, those of you that are coming up higher today this is your handstand. This is a really, really great position to learn. And then you can come down with the knees. And that's, you know, you should, you'll feel a lot stronger from that. Planks will be easier. You'll eventually be able to do some of the pushing exercises. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my toes tucked and sitting back on the heels. Now, if you can't come up and down, the sequence would be this. On the toes, like I am. Back on the feet, like I am and repeating that five to 10 times. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up where I'm gonna lift my knees off the floor and I'm gonna lower the knees. So making it a little bit more active, which you don't have to do. You know, just, if you're ready for something like this, it's very good. Um, there's not a day that I don't work on the strength and flexibility of my feet. Like that's something that I, I'm, I'm practicing often especially when it's affecting my walking. So if I'm not walking at a higher standard that I have, definitely working on my feet, my ankles, my knees, my hips, so that things move more fluidly. So I'm gonna take my arms forward if I need them to balance. I'm gonna come a little bit off my heels, then coming up to the height, you know, 90 degree angle, and then bringing myself up. So, it's good to do double legs. I'm gonna do more single leg. So I'm here, I'm gonna bend the knees. I'm coming down into a crouch position where I'm sitting on the heel and then standing up. I'm, gonna do, I'm just gonna stay on one leg, which builds up more conditioning in terms of leg strength. And maybe you're not sitting as low as I am, but like I said, when you got strong legs, strong hips, it's so much easier to kick up. All right, just one more on this side. And the right foot, the foot that's you know not tucked, it could be turned out a little bit. Knee could be down, you could be you know alternating the knee just to get more mobility in the hip. So push strong, come up, press through the foot, you're bringing yourself back up. So I'm I'm squatting, but I'm gonna lift one heel up off the floor. So I'm coming down, I'm sitting on my right heel, I'm bringing myself up down. Find the distance that you need with your feet. I'm kind of close, right, together, but it could certainly be wider, right? It's a matter of what type of limbs you have. So you're bringing yourself up one more time, a couple more times down, press to the feet. When you come up, it's almost like you're jumping. Try to come up a little bit stronger. So a slow descent is really good in building eccentric strength and like you need power, right, to kick up, right? Initially, that's what you'll need. You press through the feet like you're jumping up. 
and that'll help get you up. But what we're gonna do is get into the bent arm strength, and then with the bent arm strength, like I said, it'll help you in being in a straight arm position today. So I'm coming forward. These are called, they're just uh, archer push-ups. So I, I have one arm out to the side, and then I'm gonna do an eccentric. So I'm doing an eccentric, it's a little bit, that's probably gonna be the way for you. You have a lot of strength, right? You're coming up and down on that one side. So it's, it's a pretty long stance out. So I'm here with my hands, and important to have your feet apart initially in the beginning for balance, and just so that you can, you're not, you know, so much into your lower back. So when I'm here, I'm basically gonna take it out, or I'm gonna go out to my right hand at first. So when I'm coming out to the side, I'm coming out um, into this low position, just trying to give you the best angle. So when I'm here, the straight arm is the straight arm is where you're moving away from, right? So when I'm here, I'm gonna go out to the side. Just hope you can see, yeah, everybody can see this. So when I'm here, I'm going here, and maybe you're coming down. Because you might crash a little bit, but you, you, know, you wanna support it where you have stability. And again, the more difficult it is, the more beneficial it'll be for you, as long as you're not hurting yourself, right? So we're gonna go out and do the right side a couple more times. So I'm just gonna do an eccentric. So if I can, I'm slow, 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 control, right? And then down. So push yourself back up into the, the top of the push-up. So push to the feet, guide yourself over to the right, keep it in, keep it in, keep it in, and then down. But like if you've been doing years of yoga the same way, you get really efficient, but you almost get weak in a certain way, and it sometimes is, it's the root cause of a, rep a repetitive stress injury. So it's good to really change the angles of your arms and your shoulders. So I'm gonna go out to the left side, so my right arm is straight, my feet are separated, my hands are turned out if I need to, and then when I go out to the side, I'm controlling, 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 and then down. But this circular kind of motion will, the, the reality is your shoulder's gonna be in different angles, and it's gonna help support the shoulder being stronger as opposed to always keeping the same alignment. So back over to the left again, my feet are wide, coming out, coming out, right? Pressing through the hand, controlling the bottom position. And you may have heard this, don't go lower than the height of your elbow. That's completely false, you know? Of course, if it hurts, don't go that low, but I've never hurt my shoulder in doing something like this. So when I'm here, I'm moving, 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 controlling, pushing really strong into the floor, and then back down, and then I'm gonna come up. But when you get into like, again, your typical plank, side plank, that's easy. Those are great positions, but you'll feel a lot stronger and stable in those poses just from putting the stress that you put yourself through on the position like we just did. So come back up onto the hands and come up into plank and really push to the hands, push to the hands, the fingertips, right? then come back down on the knees. And then when you come back down on the knees, I'm gonna take my strap again, my band again. I'm gonna be on my toes, just so that you can see it a little bit better. Is I'm just gonna be in a Cuban position, 90 degree angle, and then I'm stretching the arms straight up. So what I did earlier at the wall, this is much easier, but still very good. So when I'm here, just to give you some variety in, in the band work, so I'm pulling the band apart and then I'm stretching it up. Um, because the band stretches, it could be more narrow. So to here, which is really great, and then taking it back up and then bringing it forward and bringing it down. So just come where you're sitting back on the feet again, just to adjust the feet. And we're gonna get into our first handstand and what I believe is probably the best way to build up strength for women and men is wall walks. So when you walk up the wall, maybe you can't walk all the way back, just, just go as far as you can go. 
and it's kind of contra indicative as far as the name of the pose. If your hands are close to the wall, your chest should not touch the wall. And definitely if your hands are not close to the wall, you don't want your chest to be at the wall. You know, that's just completely opposite to the straight line that you're trying to produce in a handstand. So I would start like probably about, if I can, if I'm first learning this, is about maybe two feet away from the wall with my hands. And it's good to come out, right? It's good to come out before you, you know, obviously, you don't want to go to failure because you could really fall and obviously hurt yourself. So when you're handstanding, the hands are slightly turned out. You want the index fingers to point straight forward. Um, you know, the, it's not the middle finger. It's the index finger. So slightly out. And if you spend a lot of time on your hands, it's very good to some days have your hands turned out quite a bit. You know, you see break dancers or b-boys, right? Their hands are out, gymnasts are out. So you as a practitioner can do the same, right? It's, you don't have to have the hand straight forward. So come down on the hands and just protract the shoulders. Get your shoulders to move apart. And that should be really stable. And when you're first learning it, keep it. And as you get more into longer handstands, um, something that you might, you, know, you need the protraction but maybe you're not pushing as hard the whole time, like in a one minute handstand, right? So I'm gonna lift one leg up the wall, and as I lift it up, I'm gonna walk towards the wall with my hands. See how I'm transferring the weight? And then I'm here, I'm just gonna pause, and then I'm coming out again. These are so good. Like you wanna get stronger in handstanding, um, I'd start out every other day or twice a week, something like that, but these are really, really good to help with that. And then as you get better at it, rather than a longer time, get really clean with your line for shorter times. And that could be like five sets or 10 sets, right? 15, 20 seconds, something like that, right? I'm gonna take my opposite leg up. So notice how I transfer the weight around. So as I move the weight around, then I can walk back. As I'm back at the wall, Trying to bring my abdomen in, my ribs in, and then I'm walking back out. So I'm doing these kind of slow or slower than some people would do them, but I'm trying to make it a little bit more specific in understanding the line as opposed to just going up. Like going up, like when I do it, sometimes I'll, I'll go up five, ten times back, but quite quick. And that's more for like, you know, power and just conditioning. We're gonna do it one more time. So again, uh, it's not critical that you go further back, but as you get more practice in, you'll definitely be able to go back as far as, you know, if you're ever wanting to get the line, the complete line, it's about a hand um, away from the wall, about a hand and a half, depending on how big your hands are, right? So I'm going back up one more time. Once I go up, I'm transferring the weight. I'm pushing through my hands, my fingertips. And then just if, if you, and you could watch this video later, is I'm pushing into the floor so that my shoulders are more up towards my ears and my ribs are in, right? And then I'm gonna walk back out, back out. And then as you come out, you'll come down and do a squat, if you can, right? This crouch position is really kind of um, a very good way to so you can squat, you can sit on a block, you can have your heels elevated, but just come down onto your hands and your knees, and with your hands down on the floor, I'm gonna bring, again, the back of my hand into the floor, just to stretch out the form. I'm moving the weight towards my right hand, and exposing the wrist, the forearm, right? And I'm gonna change the angle various ways. I'm just gonna have it forward now, and when you're working with one hand more independently, it's, it's a little bit more specific. You'll understand more of your body. So if you don't necessarily know what's limiting you or what's strong or what's weak, and everybody has imbalances, you know, just changing the positions and working more independently makes a difference.
So come up into plank, and then in plank, make the front of your body strong, make it hollow, keep the ribs in, really push through the hands, through the fingertips, and then walk your feet back um, into the middle of your mat, and walk your hands back towards your feet. So I'm bringing the weight forward into my hands, back into my heels. You got a good forward bend, it's very easy to learn a handstand. You do not have a good forward bend, it doesn't, you know, unless you're pressing in handstand, makes a difference. So I'm gonna get that. But what we're gonna do next is a bit of mobility work for the hips. So you're gonna be in a wide stance. And in a wide stance, this, this stance kind of covers a lot of different things. So I mentioned, I think last week or maybe a couple weeks ago about foam rolling and getting more mobility in the lower body. So if you're in a wide ranging type of practice, like a Cossack stretch is what I'm using, my feet are turned out and I'm moving the weight around. So just get familiar with moving the weight around. If you're more comfortable with the hands down, we can, we can have the hands down. I like keeping the body upright so that you're putting the stress on the hips. You know, and when I'm forward and I'm down, it's good, it's good, it's a good way. It's just, um, kind of in prints, that's how you're going to be doing it. So when I'm upright, I, and I'm, I'm just exploring, getting down, when my foot's turned in, like my back foot's turned in, it's more adductor, like middle splits. You're working on your middle splits. This is obviously a good position for that. I'm transferring the weight into the left leg, and I'm just moving side to side. And you know, if you like something like this, it could be, you know, start with a minute, two minutes. If you're more, like I said about reps, if I really wanted to stimulate or grow the strength of my leg, I go up and down on the same leg. If I had inflammation and say like knees and hips and stuff like that, I keep the reps low, but I would do more frequency, like morning, afternoon and evening, something like that, right? I'm gonna to go to the left side. And as you get more and more flexible, um, you just have more availability as far as how you can move and what type of positions you can do. If I elevate the foot, it's more hamstring, right? So if I'm always bringing weight into the leg that's bent, I can encourage more weight into the, the opposing leg. I'm gonna go to the right side again as I'm down. Like I said, it's not bad to be low. It's just, it puts a different kind of stress on your body. So know where you're flexible pliable in and know where you're not and practice more what's difficult. Um, carry it into the left side, right foot is up, and then you can do eventually some really nice transitions. And the transitions are, I think, more of like a good test, like how much, how much can you move from positions, right? Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stretch the legs out wide here. My legs out wide, I'm gonna take my arms out wide. You know, this will help with the last position. You know, this is what you could use before. So there's many, many, many ways to do this. So I'm squeezing in for a moment, and then from time to time I'm pushing out. And the more I push out, the lower I can get. And um, really great on grass, right? sand. There's a lot of things you could do in, in, on those types of surfaces. So just bring the hands down, as you bring the hands down, I'm, I'm squeezing in and pushing out because you might actually need less weight. And then as you get more practice in, then you can encourage the weight or the intensity. Like kind of like what I was saying with the band is you can move through a position or with, with weight, which will help build up strength in the lower body. And then you can produce a greater range. So I'm going to bring the feet in a little bit closer. I'm going to walk the feet back in back into the center and uh, we're going to kick up in terms of kicking up with the wall this is just a good practice just to learn to kick up so if you wanted to kick up in the middle of the room you could certainly do that i'm going to kick up um, kind of more for coordination and i like this just because uh you know it just adds a different kind of understanding in the position so when you kick up you can kick up into threes now if you can't kick up a big reason is that your shoulders aren't over your hands. Is that probably the biggest reason for that? It's not so much your hips, 
I mean, that factors in. But if I'm here with my shoulders, that's so hard to kick up. So you want to get the weight forward before you ever kick up, obviously to press up, you know, then, then you're bringing it forward like that. Uh, I'm about probably about four inches away from the wall with my hands. Obviously use a mat, you know, if your hands are slippery or if you're sweaty, you know, it's really good to do. I mean, obviously be safe, but um, arms are really straight here. You know, you have any kind of bend in the elbow, uh, you're at risk in falling, right? You're not, you're locked out, but not hyperextended. Shoulders up towards the ears, really reach up through the arms, makes a world of difference in terms of getting that, that stability. So I'll just kick up a couple times on each side and then I'll, I'll go into the coordination of it. So when you, when you have your hands down and you're lifting here, trying to get really strong through the front of your body and then you're taking the right leg up and then you're bringing the left leg down and then I'm going to swing the left leg up. And the, the coming down can really help build up some strength. So coming down. And that could be, you know, maybe you don't come up, but you set a timer and you do it for 30 seconds or a minute and it'll build up more conditioning. And I've said this before, is it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, right? You could have, you know, you could be misaligned, but you're getting closer and closer to your handstand, which I think is great. You know, if you're a bit gun shy, just stick to, you know, stick to this position where you're here. And this is, this is your handstand rather than kicking up. But I'm going to kick up one leg, opposite leg's going to come down. I'm going to alternate the legs, right, which is a, a great coordination. Try to keep the ribs in. So down with the hands, up with the shoulders, the shoulders are up towards the ears. So you're swinging the right leg up. And then I'm going to bring my right leg down and my left leg will come up. And then the left leg will come down and the right leg will come up. Left leg down, right leg up. And then hold, 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 hold. Keep the ribs in. And bringing the left leg down and the right leg down. So just a little bit of getting upside down. And like I said, if as you feel stronger and you can, maybe you could do this for about a minute. I think it's good to explore being in the middle of the room and learning kind of like how to fall out is a great practice. I mean, it'll kind of naturally happen as long as you don't tense up. I think it's perfectly safe to do that. So I'm going to come down on the hands and turn the hands back towards the knees. So my hands are turned back. Right, I'm sitting the weight back into my fingers, right, just to stretch up the forearms. And this is more of, you know, some people they're like, ah, oh, my hands really hurt in handstands. I mean, this is excessive. You know, it's not all of your weight, but it's in a much greater angle. It'll help with, you know, when you do say you fall out or you're going too far into the hands and wrists. So turn the, the right hand back and do the same. You can sit back. So eventually the heel of the hand, if you go back far enough, it should naturally lift up. You know, and you're not trying to keep that down because you know, that could be too much pressure uh, for the connective tissues of the hands and of the wrist. So come back into having the hands forward, lift up into plank, push through the hands, make the uh, front of your body nice and small and strong, and then take it up into a down dog. So you pull the hips back, come forward, come through, elevate your chest forward and through, and then pull, pull back up into a down dog, and then come down on your knees, and then sitting back on your heels again. So I'm going to do, I'm going to finish up with a back bend, and not, nothing crazy, but a low bridge with the heels up, like I am here, is a good starting point. Let's say you, you're wanting to learn wheel, but like if, if I couldn't get my hips up off the floor, this is the most difficult part of what I'm going to do next, is put a block underneath your pelvis 
don't have a block with me right now, but it, it'll, you can tuck the toes as I'm doing, but you can learn how to push. And it's just a different coordination. When you can't do something that's based in strength, we, just, we all, often assume, myself included, we'll assume that we're not strong enough, but it's really coordination. It's like knowing how to coordinate, how to use the muscular energy in the body to, to do a certain pose. So when I come back onto my back, I'm going to lift up into just a, a typical low bridge or what we call, you know, yoga, we call it bridge. Your gymnastics, all this is bridge. All of it is bridge. But the hips are lifting. I'm pushing down for the heels. All right. And then I'm just going to do a little bit of some spinal weight. I'm going to bring my upper back into the floor. Mid back comes down. Low back comes down. And then I'm going to lift through the pelvis and then lifting through the low back, lifting through the mid back, lifting through the upper back. Nothing crazy, right? Just, you know, just to move the spine a little bit from what we had just done. And then I'm going to slowly bring the upper back down and the mid back and the low back. Now you're going to take your hands over, over your shoulders. So what really is common with wheel is hands are too close and this is a common mistake that's taught in yoga is that the hand should be underneath the shoulders. I mean, if you have flexibility, if you have enough flexibility, that's a perfectly good thing to do. But if you really struggle and flexibility in the shoulders, you want to get a 90 degree angle with the arm. That's what you're looking for. And that's why you should videotape yourself. So when I'm, I'm back over my hands, I'm looking, so I'm looking at the elbow, right? So I'm seeing, Right, how much, how much I'm here in terms of the angle, the 90 degree angle. But like I said, come up with, come up on the toes and elevate the hips. And then what you're going to do is have the hands over the shoulders like we are. But you want the elbows to hug in, shoulders move back in space. And I'm going to push through my hands and lift my head off the floor. Now my head could be on the floor, right? but it's off the floor and I'm bringing the weight more forward towards my knees so that I'm getting more extension predominantly through my hip flexors, right? And then I'm gonna bring my chin to my chest, I'm gonna lie back onto my back, I'm gonna straighten my legs back out. So again, when you, when you push, just create some tension and maybe you're not coming up all the way, but you're pushing enough so that you can get that, that sense of how to push and how to release that. I'm going to do one more. I'm going to have the toes tucked. So you could pull the feet back, right? I just, I'm pulling the feet back. You want to keep your knees from falling in initially, right? In Virasana, the knees are in. So it's something you can do in different positions. But I'm taking the hands over the shoulders and just push into the floor. Just feel the floor. I'm not using a ton of strength here, but I'm just pushing. And then as I push, I can get more coordinated and I can bring my hips um, slightly forward, right? But I'm, like in the handstand, I'm bringing my ribs in. So that's like counterintuitive to what you're actually doing in, uh, you'd think in a back bend, but it's, it's, it's also very helpful to stretch out more of the front of the body. And then you can bring the shoulders down and the head down and you can walk the legs forward. You can stretch the legs forward. Right, but this will add a lot of range within the lower body, which again is a, is a great complement to not just having a handstand practice. Right? But I'm going to roll to one side. I'm going to use my hands. I'm going to come up. And I'm going to sit cross-legged. So as I'm sitting cross-legged, I'm just going to do some side bend just to help with adjusting from the back bend. So I'm taking my right arm up to the right. I'm moving forward with my upper body. That's the angle that I need. I'm moving back in space. If that's the angle that I need. Uh, you could certainly get down onto the elbow. That'll add more leverage into the rib cage and side of you. But for beginners, right, that's like a big no-no. Don't go down and don't come up. But it's actually a very good way that you could use as well. You just you know, you want to be a low number. I'd start with like five or ten. But then as you you know, those of you that have more flexibility, I mean, you could be lower. And if I was sitting on something higher, it's actually more progressive. So I could take the left hand behind the head, you know, because it's, it's, it's further away from the floor for me to get down. So really try to lift up through the upper body, the chest, 
and then taking the left arm up to the left, you can bring yourself back up and you can recross the legs. And then I'm taking my left hand to the left. I'm moving my body forward in space if that's the angle that I need. I'm leaning back in space. I'm turning. You know, I can take my elbow down, right? No one's even. And that's why I'm a big proponent of, you know, it's, it's okay if you're holding the poses the same amount of length, but you'd most likely benefit more from being a little bit more methodical and approaching each side differently and holding them longer. You can take the right hand behind the head and going to each side will have a different set of benefits. You know, when I go to this side, it's more adjusting my spine and my ribs. When I go to the right, it's way more effective in my hip. So it really just depends. But again, I could come down and up. Um, that's a really good way. And for someone that's really tight, you know, they, they want to spend more time in it. But if you just put them in the most extreme position, uh, it's kind of almost unfair. You can take the right arm up to the right and you can bring yourself back up. I'm going to recross the legs and then just sitting. And you can sit with your eyes open or closed. And just, you know, it's good to sit after breakfast. But when you're sitting, just kind of notice your weight. Is your weight too far forward? Is it too far back? Is it to one side? You know, getting to know yourself is ultimately the one of the greatest teachers. So I hope you had a great time today. I love teaching this class. I love teaching. I love sharing. So if you liked it, fantastic. You can leave me a comment. Anything that you'd like me to um, further go in detail or possibly teach, I'm happy to do that. And then also, if you're more interested in my class schedule, uh, all my information is on my website. It's johnwithyoga.com. And that, uh, you can see where you could make a donation. A donation would be through the platform of Venmo or PayPal, but it could also be, it could be something that, you know, if, you know a, a, a different route. We could, you know, if you'd like to make a donation. If you can't make a donation, you could help me tremendously by sharing my information with people that you feel that could benefit from my, my style of teaching. So um, have a beautiful weekend. It's beautiful here um, where I'm living. I hope it is the same for you. Stay well, take care, continue with a good practice, and you know, you'll just keep reaping the benefits from it. All right, take care, all right, bye-bye.